We're talking about these unprecedented floods, which have just hit Beijing. And in fact, most of China has experienced some kind of heavy yeah. downfall. It's insane. There's a couple of things I just want you to know. Um, it's really important because we experienced, when we lived in China over a decade, if you guys are new here, yep. um, when we lived in the south of China, we had experienced flooding all the time. Every year. Every year. Every it's year. just, it was ubiquitous. It was mm -hmm. in every Chinese city in the south. But that comes with typhoons and bad weather. This is the first time that China's experienced horrific, horrific flooding in the capital yes. where, you know, the dictator lives. Yes. And it has so many implications and so many things that are important uh, surrounding this event and so many things that are being covered up. Yes. And so we wanted to verify things. We wanted to make sure you understood very clearly what's happening. But this is crazy. We've got some incredible footage coming out of China. First, we're going to start out with something that's quite unprecedented, and that is the Forbidden City being flooded. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Forbidden City is just off of Tiananmen Square, and it hasn't flooded in hundreds of years. No, 140 years. Yeah. Uh, the joke here that people wrote there is like, after the new renovation, suddenly it can flood again. Yeah, mm, yeah. We'll talk about that a little later on. Importantly, guys, you have to know that uh, China, this is the worst flooding, <laughs> the worst disaster from mm -hmm. floods that China's ever seen in documented history. Yeah. That's kind of an important detail. It is an important detail. Now, this is Tiananmen Square. <laughs> Now, Tiananmen Square is very, very, very important. It is uh, the the gate of heavenly peace in China, mm -hmm. and that's that's literally indicative of the of the dynasties of the leader and the ruler, right? Yes, which is very important to understand because there is not supposed to be disasters in that area. And we'll get into that why it's very auspicious. Yeah. Uh, this so that you hear see over here is the Daxing International Beijing International Airport. Now, this was only completed about five years ago, four years ago, and it cost something ridiculous. How much did it end up costing? I yeah, think it was I just eight, my notes like here. Um, eighty billion yuan. Yeah, so it ended up being... In U.S. dollars, what is that? In U.S. dollars, it ended up being $11.4 billion for one airport. Yeah, but that's a brand new megastructure, yeah. okay, in China. It was the, the systems there were designed by a French firm, I believe. Mm -hmm. But this is what happens is most of the, the big buildings in China and big infrastructure projects actually are uh, foreign designed, but it's the construction. Yeah. When they do the construction, they use tofu drake construction practices they take shortcuts. But anyway... Poor materials, poor building practices. Yeah, and so you, you get problems. Now, the flooding has been insane, and it's hit the outlying areas of Beijing in a massive way, and the downtown city, as you've seen them. Remember, this the is airport, a dry area. This is an yeah. area that doesn't get this. Yeah. So you saw the airport, you saw Tiananmen Square, you saw the Forbidden City right in the center of Beijing. But this is the kind of uh, scenery that you're seeing all around Beijing, um, and it's absolutely insane. All right. And there's something that we wanted to focus on here is not so much the ecological devastation and collapse. Yeah. That you one might say, <laughs> but the Chinese government's response. And yeah. this is super important here because, OK, before you, we even get into this, I've been speaking to friends in China. Yep, same. And they don't even know this is not going on. Not a clue. I had to talk to people in Beijing. Yeah. Outside of Beijing, people didn't even know. And well, actually, I lied. One person knew about it, and it was like, oh, that, I saw that on the news. But yeah, it was like a like, quick little... It's This you know. This is the kind of thing that you would expect to be front-page news yes. everywhere. Everyone should know about it. Worst disaster in 140 years. Worst disaster, disaster in the documented history of China. Yeah, but it's kind of back-page news. Blood. And the only time that you see it... Um, it's kind of said like, oh, you know, great rescue efforts. But we'll get yeah, into that. Yeah. This is how the Chinese government deals with this. Watch this very closely. Here you have a bridge. Okay. Okay, so the location is... So this is the first, he's saying it, he made a mistake, he said 1st of July, but he meant 1st of yeah, August. it would make sense, there's yeah. no floods then. Anyway, yeah. I do want to point something out. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is uh, something to pay attention to, and this is uh, what took us a little while. China is trying to cover up this specific area. Yeah. And it's very interesting because when there were, uh, you know, videos coming out of people just taking videos... The, the location was getting wiped and censored. Yes. Not just the location, the name of the bridges, because they don't want people to know that yeah. there were bridges collapsed. And do you know why? 
and I think this is, I haven't seen any mainstream media talk about this. Yeah. There's a huge multi-billion dollar effort for Chinese propaganda abroad right now. Yeah. And one of their things, one of their tenets recently has been how many bridges China has built in such a little time, whereas yes. other countries like America doesn't build bridges like sure. China does. So you can't have bridges, new bridges, especially collapsing, but they're collapsing all over the country. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we thought this was really interesting and it took us ages, but we finally figured out where it is. Yeah. Now this is on the fifth uh, ring road. Now, if you don't know Beijing, it has these uh, concentric rings so it starts in the beginning in the yeah. middle and your first second third ring road and basically the closer you are to the center the more rich you are the more yeah. like uh, more cosmopolitan yeah. but the fifth ring road is a part of Beijing proper, the actual city. And so yeah. this is part of Beijing. What's downtown Beijing? And as you can hear, this guy, what he's saying here. I mean, if you can look at the map above us, right in the center, you can see that's where you'll find Tiananmen Square and all that nonsense, yeah. okay? And it kind of goes out, so it's right there. Now, if you listen to carefully what he says here. So he says there were Liu uh, Qiliang, so they had six or seven cars fell into the water yeah, and got from swept away saw. from what he saw. Yeah. So he saw six or seven cars. Of course, they're occupied, right? So that's yeah. people in there. They all swept away. Yeah, showing any death or yeah don't worry. Today. YouTube, chill out. Yeah, yeah. We've seen that there are yeah, clips going that, around yeah. of drowned people, Lots. but we're not, we're not going to show that. So he said six or seven cars got swept away. Yeah, the, the reason I'm putting this in is we've got to put a little bit of humor into this. So not making, making, no, we're not making fun of any kind of tragedy here, but like this is what the Chinese government's response was. Yeah, I mean, this is insane. So let's see what they did. Hold on, yeah, let's yeah. point this out. I was translating this, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute. Look at, see the XXX on the screen? Yes. They're if blocking look. out. And by the way, these a lot of these clips were removed, period. Yes. But they were blocking out the name of the bridge yeah. in the subtitles. Yeah, he cannot say the name in his subtitles because yeah. it's being um, completely censored. Yes. Now, that is the same bridge that you saw earlier, yeah. where the six or seven cars, the one guy witnessed getting... Just uh, in that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can see... There's a car still, there are cars still on there. You cannot believe this. Okay. I'm sorry. You cannot so, believe what happened here. Here's, imagine you are the Chinese government, yes, okay? Yes. Now you've got to send out your rescue workers because right. this bridge is collapsed. Yes. What would you do? Let me ask you, what would you do if this is what you were faced with? Here's a half collapsed bridge, okay? It started to subside now. Now you can send in the rescue workers. What's the first thing you do? You absolutely send in rec rescue workers from the air to get an aerial view to see if there's any stragglers or people mm. floating around. You send in boats from the side, mm -hmm. rescue rafts. You get a whole sure. team. You get firefighters. You get ropes. You get everything you can. Right? Sure. Because you, you're in the capital. This is where all this stuff is. All sure. the rescue workers and the best equipment is in Beijing. Yeah. You know, within minutes. I mean, I would also be like, let's go remove the cars off yes. of the bridge. Let's seal. Make sure there's no one in there. Yeah. Let's make sure that the bridge is properly sealed off. Right. Make sure it's all safe. Make sure that, you know, let's start clearing the debris. Let's go and search over there. But what does the Chinese government do? What, what do you think was their priority? And you can get a hint from the, the fact that the bridge name was uh, subtitles were, were removed. Yeah, they're removed. You, couldn't, you can't even say the name of this bridge. Let's have a look. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did you see that? I mean, yeah, I, I hope everybody saw that. Rather than go and actually address the problem, they send the people out to put up 
these barriers on the side so nobody can see it. They physically censored the bridge collapse so people don't think that a bridge collapsed. So you can't see the collapsed Instead of bridge rescuing. from the road. Yes. Instead so, of rescuing. Yeah. Instead of sending people out to actually address the problem, the priority of the Chinese government is to censor that there is a problem. That's how they fix their problems is hide the problems. They don't address them. I mean, that's just insane. Yeah. And this is something you see with everything. Remember Chain Woman? Rather yes. than address the problem, yeah. they just stopped anyone from going to that village and yeah. not allowing reporters to go. Remember it's how they the, do with everything. The, the shroud? They were bragging about this. That we should have included Yeah, this. the shroud where they like block. You know, there's a white yeah. paper protest in Shanghai. All the people were asking Xi Jinping to step down, right? Mm -hmm. And it was crazy. It was unprecedented. Yeah. And so they invented this shroud method where police put up this giant shroud and cover up protesters so yeah. people can't see them so they can whisk them away and disappear yeah. them. Just block, Insane. physically censor... The problem. So in this, uh, 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 so Holy shit, look at what they're doing. Yeah. Okay, so um, here's the thing. This flood hit on the weekend, okay? And it only stopped, like the heavy rain only stopped Monday morning. Yes. Okay? So yesterday you saw was the guy was pointing out the, the first, right? And he's pointing out all the, uh, you know, the collapsed car stuff. Mm. Still huge amounts of flood waters are receding. It's, there's still an issue there, okay? Oh, and all of northern China yeah. is currently being pelted. So we thought we'd go and take a look at like the big newspaper websites and see what's going on. So you went to this website. What are we greeted with here? We're greeted with some lovely dictator quotes, some Xi Jinping love. We got your hammers and sickles talking about how you, know, you got to study Xi Jinping thought. We had promotion of China's solar expansion. Yeah, we green had technology. Green technology, everything is hunky-dory and fan. Fantastic. The one mention of the uh, of the flooding, yeah. which again, the worst flooding in documented China's history yes. in the capital where yeah. the government is headquartered. Yes. A huge damning thing, which we'll get into later. Yeah. Uh, very, very crazy. Anyway, what do you think? What do you think the what they posted was? It was a picture of successful rescue efforts and how they've completely wiped the floor. Let's have a look. I yeah. put the English one up so people can actually understand. Okay. All right, so yeah, there's uh, an English version, right? Well, look at, yes, here's the... People's she, Daily Online, Xi Jinping, she extends condolences to Pakistani president over suicide bomb attack. Okay, what else do we got? We have uh, China goes growing. all out. They're doing promotion of rice growing, by the way. We're back in the Cultural Revolution slash yes. the Great Leap Forward again. Yes. Uh, but go forward a little bit. Because there's see, one little headline there. Yeah, there's a, it says there, China goes all out to tackle typhoon-induced torrential rain and floods. Did That's it, though? I think what China did was go all out and put up sensors on the bridges so people can't see the bridge collapses. I mean, the fact that the front page of the biggest news site only mentions it like that. Is it, and again, it's like, oh, typhoon-induced, you know, it's... Nothing to do with like our bad infrastructure or our bad response. So here's the, the images picture. from the article, right? Yeah. What does that look like? It looks like a tiny little thing happened. Like, oh, look. Some... Oh, yeah. Wait till you see the footage. Yeah. Wait till you actually see the yeah, footage. Yeah, we'll show you. We'll show you some real footage of what's been going on. Look at the successful reservoir and how it dealt with yes. the floodwaters, mm -hmm. right? Yes, exactly. What There's... else? What else did they put in this article? I mean, this the next one's my favorite. This aerial photo shows fishing boats taking shelter from the approaching typhoon. It's like beautiful blue skies. This is in this is that article, by the yeah. way, the, the link where it's How like China flood? goes all out to like, yeah. you know. Um, okay. That's great. Yeah, let's see what the Navy did. Yeah, let's see what the Chinese Navy did. Well, oh, a submarine. I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's pretty bad if a Chinese military submarine is being washed up on, on the shore. You know what I mean? <laughs> I um, mean, come on. Yeah, I know, right? That's not on the front page. No, no. Where's that even coming where, from? Yeah, where like, where is this from? even coming from? I don't from? mean the left, because yeah. I hopefully no one got hurt <laughs> no, in that no. incident. Yeah. Um, but she, <laughs> yeah. where did that come from? Let's check okay. the helicopter rescue. Now, okay, here's the thing. The Chinese government is 
panicking right now because and we'll explain to you exactly why they're panicking later. You've got a whole segment on it. Yeah. But their whole thing is to downplay the incident. Yeah. And the way they always do this, and they did this with the Sichuan earthquakes, have done this, this with every natural disaster, is they don't focus on the damage. They don't focus on the affected areas. They don't focus on anything. What they focus on is how great um, the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, is at coming into the rescue and saving everyone and, and pro- saving props everything. to the real rescue workers. Absolutely. But let's see where the priorities are for the Chinese government yeah. yet so, again. Um, something the Chinese netizens were making fun of is this helicopter rescue. Take a look. Okay. So as you can see, there are people stranded on a roof that are busy being uh, airlifted out by helicopter. Okay, and this is big. You can tell, if you look at the rescue workers, uh, they all have GoPros on their helmets and stuff. But look, netizens pointed out, what's going on here? There are people <laughs> standing ankle deep in the waters down there, right? So, it's, I translate some of these comments like, yeah, why are there two people watching? Yeah. <laughs> like, people aren't stupid, right? No, they of put, The Chinese government put this out as propaganda about, look at how amazing our rescue efforts are. We're going to helicopter yeah. in with the GoPros. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you can see the all the rescue workers have their GoPros on. You know, yeah. it's obviously a PR stunt. It's what yes. they do. Yes. Um, it says, the water is so clear, the, ha- the tires are only half submerged. Because the idea... The yeah. Chinese government wanted people to think the water's all the way up the building. Yes. So that they have to get these people that are like struggling right at the top, right? Yeah. And so they airlift them out. And the, yeah. the, the, this person said the two dudes next to the car are so confused. A lot. Yep. I don't know if, it, hopefully, you guys caught that in the beginning. Yeah. Um, the guy's just standing on the street next yeah. to their car, like watching this, be like, what's going on? I know. I like this. The people on the roof were hit with disaster, but the people on the ground were fine. <laughs> that is pretty, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny. incredible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't know why no one's covering this aspect. The, I feel like a lot of uh, the mm-hmm. mainstream coverage is quite sterile. It's like, look at this disaster. But you got to understand, China's response to this shows their intent of how they want to treat the rest of the world as well. Yeah. They treat their citizens as a PR campaign. Yeah. It's awful. I can I can no longer tell right from wrong. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Same. I like this one. This is what developed countries do <laughs> the sarcasm is fantastic yeah, yeah. and people aren't stupid right yeah. but they're helpless they can't do yeah. anything they, you challenge the government in china you yeah. get disappeared yes right so yeah yeah anyway i thought this this was kind of ridiculous fight yeah. water with let's, water let's see another response yeah well that's that's loud i know <laughs> sorry <laughs> i just i wanted people to wake up wow. okay so what is going on here, Sea Milk? This is a, a water sprayer truck. Which uh, what its job is is to clean the road. Oh, these the things annoy the, the oh, shit out of me. They spray the shit out of you yeah. when you're in China. When you ride in, if you ride a motorcycle, every yes. morning in the cities they send these trucks out that just spray like sewer water on the roads, yeah. basically, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they spray the crap out of it because the roads get filthy at night. Yeah. With everyone throws all their junk on it and it's stuff. Dusty, so, muddy. Yeah. So they. They spray the, oh, the roof, grease. The yes. The grease that comes. You guys have to understand in China. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. On the roads, there's like channels of grease sure. that come out from like gutter oil stuff. From well, it's like from the side, roadside barbecue stalls yeah. and stuff. So, you know, look, if you didn't have these trucks, it would be pretty bad. So yes. they do do a good service. But, okay, it shows you how... Uh, robotic people have to be in China. You have to. You can't have your own initiative because if I was a driver of one of these spray the road trucks. Government truck. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I've got my job to do, but the streets are literally flooded with water. I would say it's probably unnecessary for me to get into my truck this morning and go spray down the and hose down the streets. But you have to but do it. But you just have to do you it because do you know, it. you're just the a government co- cog in the machine. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so ridiculous. So not only one. Um, that was in Baoding, yeah. That's near Beijing. Yeah. But there's another one doing it as well. <laughs> you know, so people are catching these people doing this. Well, is kind I of mean, ridiculous. and people aren't stupid. They're like, "What are you yeah, doing? Like, what are you doing? What's wrong with you?" Anyway, real talk here. Okay, we're showing you some footage in the background now of some of what the flood has done because, you know. People have phones, people are taking videos, and people are sharing videos. And it's absolutely insane, the amount of flooding. The central government in China, the Mm -hmm. CCP, Communist Party of China, wants you to think that it's blue skies. They sent in their top guys, rescued some people, and they're heroes, and it was all over. Yeah. This is what was actually happening in the capital city of Beijing. Yeah. The capital of China, Beijing, was experiencing these floods, and all of... um, 
not just Beijing, but all of uh, Hebei was affected. Yes. Uh, basically, the, air, the area that was most hit was actually the size of Great Britain, mm. uh, if you were to make an equivalent. Yeah, so it's huge. Uh, but, you know, a lot of the places that I was a little bit upset were not getting any attention were in other areas of China. Like, all of eastern China was hit by this. Yes. This typhoon. And not only that, Guizhou. Guizhou, central China. Like, about like three or four days ago, Guizhou yeah. was hit massively. Absolutely devastated, but nobody talks about it. Yeah. You know? And even up in Harbin now, in yeah, Heilongjiang right province. Now, yeah. So this is actually happening, Zhang Zai, it's happening at yeah. this moment. Mm. And it's happening right now in like Mudangjiang and Harbin. Yeah. All the way up north in China. And this place Look at these cars, by the way. Isn't that terrifying how they're basically being sucked under into that torrent? And if you hear the commentary of the people filming this, they say there are people in the cars. They can see people in yes. the cars. So, and we you know. won't show any of no, the of aftermath. Course. But the, um, listen... China has declared on that on their on China Daily, by the way, that eleven people passed away. Only this eleven flooding. people. I mean, w- I've just seen look. I've seen footage of dead people yeah, from this flood, which we'll detail. never show. Yeah. We'll never show. But th- there's more than eleven people. Yeah. Even from what I've seen with my own eyes. This is being swept up like crazy. They yeah. do not want people to see what you're looking at. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, just look at all the cars. the The roads have been turned to rivers, and the biggest. Biggest thing that I can take away from all of this, honestly, is the fact that my friends living in other parts of China didn't even know this was happening. And again, I think that there's an alibi from the CCP's part. It's mm-hmm. because, yes, we we covered it, right? Yes, you can go on state media and you can see, yes, there was flooding. Yes, yeah. the rescue efforts were successful. Yeah. But it's because of the way it was covered. It's subtext. Yes. It's on the it's on the back burner. It's like, yeah, we covered it and we only showed some choice images, right? Yeah. It's not this. They're not no. showing you this. No. I mean, there are tens of millions of people that went through this flooding. Yes. And God knows how many died. I and mean, we covered what happened in the the, uh, the tunnel yes. flooding, what happened in Zhengzhou a couple of years ago. Yeah. The cover up there was massive. I don't even know what they're going to be able to... Are they going to be able to cover this up? I yeah. mean, this is insane. Yeah, it this is. This is bigger. It's, it's huge, especially in the actual capital. Yes. You know. And again, stick around because this has some... Wicked, crazy implications. Yeah. Seriously, and we just wanted to show you. You'll see why they're fighting so hard to downplay this uh, it, situation. It makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. You know, back to the whole drainage issue. Yeah. Uh, the reason why you see so much flooding in all of the big cities in China, not just Beijing. Obviously, Beijing's not used to having this amount no. of rain anyway. No. But even, even cities that are used to it. By the way, look at the water level. It's above the trucks. Yeah, this is... These this are is... like... Dump trucks over here. Can Up you see? Up to six meters of water. Yeah. Can you imagine six meters? Yeah. Um, entire towns and villages are have gone. Been, They're gone. Yeah, just wiped out because of this rain in in the surrounding areas in Hebei. It's in- incredible. It's like it's unprecedented. You know, look at the sinkhole. Yeah, we don't need so much. Don't need this audio. Don't worry. It's been taken down like how terrifying must this be my heart goes out to everyone that's involved uh but again the crazy thing about this is that a lot of people i spoke to don't really know about it and that's insane yeah and if they've heard about it they they're like oh it's just something small it's no big deal it's only like in some outlying areas or something um but that's not true you know you're looking at downtown beijing streets here you're not looking at some pikey little in the middle of nowhere 48th tier city yeah you know I mean, look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Devastating. Hmm. It's it's so scary how quickly it happened, too. Yeah. Like, there was so little warning. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing is that, we, you know, we lived in China so long. We know what the drainage system is like in these cities. But yeah. when you're in the north, you don't usually have to deal with this kind of thing because they don't get flooding in typhoons. Yeah. Like I was saying earlier, even the cities that do experience high volume of rainfall every year, the drainage doesn't work anyway. Yes. Uh, and that's due to poor planning and also poor construction. Uh, and, you know, of course, the, the drains and everything get blocked up because of the way the, the system works there when it comes to getting rid of trash and stuff. They just throw yeah. things into the it's, drains. And uh, Yeah, that's, that's another thing is that even the drainage that does exist in some areas is all clogged up yeah. with fats and lipids, and oils, things. motor oil, things yeah. like this, right? A- things solidify. Yeah. Uh, garbage. Yeah. Um, Unbelievable. And you, yeah, like I said, no one's used to this kind of stuff in this region. Yes. They're like, what, what are you talking about a typhoon? That's something that you get in the south, yeah. right, where we lived. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, good thing you brought that up. Actually, when I was living in Inner Mongolia up in northern China, yeah. it was it, it, right next to the desert. 
And when it would get mild, mild rain, you were up to your knees in the streets. Yeah. It was crazy. You know, and just from mild rains, it's just not set up for this kind of thing. And that's a new yeah, city. It is. By the way, this is a, a Quaidi distribution. So it's basically like a delivery. shipping delivery distribution plant. Sorry, there go all your Timu orders down the river. You yeah, know, some Timu and Sheans. Yeah, that's what's going on there. But yeah, you can see the scale of this. And the fact that these images that you see behind are in and around Beijing. And the main newspapers are pretty much void of any of this stuff. Yeah, well, it's like you said, the only the the choice images of yeah. the rescue workers. And again, props to them. Props it, to yeah. the people that had to do their job and actually maybe rose above the propaganda opportunities and actually did things to help people. At the end of the day, you can only do as much as you're allowed to do. Um, and, you know, they get deployed. And when they get deployed, they go do what they have to do. And there's no fault of the rescue workers. They do their job, you know. And they, they do. They work hard. But... You're working against a terrible system. You, you are, shouldn't. You shouldn't have this kind of thing in place. No, and remember, like the firefighters, remember what they have to go through. Yeah. There are whole swaths of China that have been built uh, with the idea that they're going to fire hydrants to be able to help local areas, Xiao yeah. Chu, as they're called, like a yeah. little area. Yes. And so that area will have a fire hydrant. That area will have a fire hydrant. And a woman hit one of them with her car. Yeah. And it exposed that a whole network of these fire hydrants weren't even connected to anything. No, they're just they were fake. fake. They're just stuck in the ground. So you have, and that that was a that was epidemic. That was not even yeah. in the same place that we originally found that happening. Yeah, the firefighters show up to a fire, they hook up a hose, and it doesn't work because guess what? It's not real and it's fake. It's a fake. Same fire with hydrant. the drainage. I mean, we've seen some. Remember, I've got clips of that guy pulls up the drain and there's just dirt underneath because yeah. there is actually no there's no drain. drain. So it's, it's all the, these shortcuts. The yeah, exactly. There's shortcuts are taken when it comes to uh, the infrastructure. And this is the result. And chi Chinese cities historically have been incredibly bad at drainage. Yeah. All right. They just, they have a problem with drainage. The on, there are only two cities in China that have good drainage. Mm -hmm. One of them is Qingdao, and that's because it was built by the Germans. Yeah. And the other one is an ancient Chinese city. I can't remember which one it is, but there's an ancient Chinese city that still has drainage from, you know, ancient history that works well. But all modern... Yeah, was it Jinan or something? Uh, um, I can't I remember. I'll have to look it up because I don't like to just say nonsense without having citations. Sure, sure. But it is true. I, I did look it up before. Right. But all modern Chinese cities do not have good drainage. There's not one. Yeah. There isn't. No. So whenever a, a rain comes or a typhoon, you're going to have these scenes in this kind of situation. But then again, in Beijing, this is very unprecedented. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's absolutely insane. Um, so yeah, this is uh, the footage that was coming from in and around the area. Again, the government has selected. There are, you'll, you can go on some state media, like, you know, they'll have like social media apps. Yeah. Like. Renmin Rubao or something, they'll have like a clip of a flood going down a street. Yeah. But they don't have like the entire area going under, right? Sure. They don't have the, they don't give the, the audience the impression that this is unmanageable, but it, it was unmanageable. Yeah. You, you can't, it was a force majeure. Yeah, force they majeure, like they like to say. But look at these devastating scenes, okay? This is not something that's made up. This is not falsified or this is real. Yeah. This is really what's happening and people's lives and, Never mind their property damage. I mean, like once your your car or your house has been hit by these floods, it's done. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're, you're done. Yeah, people's businesses have been wiped out. You know, and who knows how many countless lives have actually been lost. And in the the sad part is we won't know. No, because that I hate to harken back to this, but in the Zhengzhou tunnel flood, they claimed what two hundred something people died. No, in that whole in province. the whole in the whole province, not right? just the tunnel. And we did the math. And we counted it at the bare minimum, it was 5,000. Yeah. At the most absurd minimum. Yeah, exactly. Um, Thousands of people. This is a, an electric bus, by the way, going through. Because if you listen to the commentary on this one, they're all like cheering that the electric bus still works. You know, hey, props to the electric flooded. bus. Yeah. yeah. A couple more inches of rain, though. Dude, I was in Shenzhen once, I was in a bus like this, but it actually got to a point where it flooded so badly that the bus couldn't move anymore. Yeah. And everyone had to ra like wade out, those. waist yeah. deep. Yeah. Waist deep in yeah. the water, we had to wade out. I did that in a taxi. Yeah. Yeah, so, if you're in southern China, we're no stranger to no. it. So, yeah, we've uh, seen this a lot. Yeah, Beijing is not prepared for this. Absolutely At all, not. in the slightest. Yeah. yeah. Look at the water's coming into the bus. Uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Wow. Yeah, anyway, we're going to have to move on to uh, why the Chinese government is so panicked about this. Yeah, this is, I, I feel like you got enough food for thought uh, to understand how bad this actually was. Hmm. 
But I think the most important takeaway is to why, you know, we were covering what Winston was talking about. The, why why such a big cover-up? Yeah. Why, why would you need to cover up a flood that's public? It's happening in public. Yeah. Right? Why do you need to put up a facade yeah. and boards on a bridge so that people can't see a collapsed bridge? Yeah. Why don't you want people sharing clips or seeing a flood going through and wiping out crops? Yeah, that's got to be terrifying, by the way, yeah. especially if that's your field. Right. <laughs> you know... Um, yeah, why would you not want that? Why would you be so concerned that millions of people in your country are seeing something that nature did, Yeah, right? And you don't want them to collaborate and come together necessarily to say, yes, this is an issue. Yes, let's communicate to this person. Yes, are you okay? Let's work something out. Mm -hmm. Why do they want control over this entire narrative? And it's something that's very, very important to understand and actually quite easy to understand if you know a little bit of Chinese history. Right. Because Chinese history, although, you know, we're dealing with the, the Communist Party of China, it's supposed to be like the new new China, it's called. Xin Zhongguo, right? Yeah, the yeah, new yeah. China, it means post Chairman Mao, yeah. right? We actually have a little bit of uh, some aftermath here. Sorry. You know, I thought I'd throw in a little bit of humor sure. before you continue. No worries. Because this very important point that you're about to make, we actually have some slides to yeah, show yeah, you and sure. everything. But uh, there are some, obviously, good stories coming out of this. We don't want to just be like doom yeah, and gloom course. here. Um, you can see animals being rescued here, farm animals. And um, some people are kind of having some fun because uh, over here there was a petting zoo uh, that flooded. And so the rescue workers, bless their souls, are rescuing turkeys, I guess. <laughs> Is it a turkey? It's interesting to have a turkey in a petting zoo because the turkeys are from <laughs> North America. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. see why it would be exotic. There's an China. ostrich. Look, there's a little ostrich in there that they Aww. rescued. Yeah. Poor little guy. Their boat looks like it should be maintained a little better. Well, they're not used to this. Yeah. So think about the best stuff is in this area. Yeah, it's true. Is that that's also a turkey, right? Uh, you I should know. So it's very hard to see, but it looks like a turkey. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, at, at least we call it a turkey. <laughs> and look how they're filming it and stuff because it's GoPros and cameras. It's like I mean, this <laughs> at the yeah. end of the day, it's heartwarming. But that's the point. See, this is the, it's like everyone's this will be the headline everyone's on the Chinese filming it. Website. Yeah, yeah. Look, It'll be a turkey held up by the neck. Yeah, <laughs> on GoPro. <laughs> look how they're car <laughs> carrying the turkey across the river. Oh what man, a rescue! Yeah, look at that. So many cameras. That is a hideous turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, look at rabbits. Uh, here's some people paddling around their little Shao Chu, you know, yeah. their neighborhood. Which must be, if if I was a kid, that'd be fun. Oh, yeah, but you, I, I hate oh, to break what? it. I don't want to pop your bubble here, but this water will kill you. I mean, it's probably kind of full of bacteria. If you if you know anything about flooding, it's mm. bad. It's very yeah. dangerous. If you have any open wounds or anything, it gets mm. into your mouth, it's yeah. really bad, dude. Yeah, I guess you Antibiotic don't want that. resistance is going to have a field day in China with this flood. I'll yeah. Tell you what. Yeah. Well, you've got, uh, you know, just waterfalls. I wouldn't be sticking around if I was them, by the way. No, if I gotta, see waterfalls. You get these clips to brag yeah. to friends, you know. <laughs> I'm seeing waterfalls coming down my stairs. I'm like, you I, know what? You don't go chasing waterfalls, no. right? Stick to the rivers and the, you know, <laughs> the lakes that you're, that used, you're to. used to, right? Yeah. I'd be, I'd be getting, like, it's coming through the elevator. I'd be like, eh, nah, I'm out of here. Yeah, well, props to them for getting the clips, mm, you know. Mm. Some of this stuff is pretty crazy. Yeah, look, like old grandpa's having fun in his electric uh, wheelchair. He's not getting wet, which is good. Yeah. This guy's <laughs> like, what the? Yep. Yeah, so I guess, you know, some people making lemonade out of lemons over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah, and we thought we'd show you some, some actual rescues. Because, look, you have to improvise. When you're in you China, do. you can't rely on the government to come to your aid. I, I'm sorry to say. They do it for the PR. They do it when they can, but... We've seen multiple instances that it takes a very long time. So, you know, here you've got a guy driving a, a front-end loader, basically, to go yeah. rescue a dude off a roof. So it, it'll be down to the local dudes in the area to help yeah. each other out. Yeah. Um, and they'll do it. Yeah, of they'll course. They'll do a great job. I mean, you've got to help your, your fellow man in this kind of situation, yeah. your fellow villager or whatever. So he's helping people off the roof there with his, uh, what do you even call that? Like a bulldozer, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So Some sort of bulldozer. That's actually pretty effective uh, rescue tool Someone in the as chat. you can well, see here because yeah, you can scoop people up and move i mean them look they're, they're moving it's a whole awesome. village in the in the bucket there or whatever it's, it's, that's pretty cool yeah. props to them so now the the rain is more or less subsided of course it's still in beijing yeah in beijing but this is kind of what you're dealing with here yeah um again still devastating millions of people in heilongjiang oh yeah it's currently. not it's, it's not done it's not no. done uh, and this is some of the aftermath uh, that they, they have to deal with. Uh, and I've got a clip here of the PLA coming in to do their heroic um, 
cleanup. I kind of wanted to look at this a little bit, though. Sure. They don't seem very well coordinated. Look at this dude's like got a branch or front something. Front end loader, that's what it was called. Yeah, it's a front end loader. That's right. We we get uh, TLBs, tractor loader back actors as well that you can like. Anyway, they'd all be good for it. They'd be yeah. good for they'd rescue. Be, everything would be good. Yeah, everything yeah. would be good. Um, I like how they like using a tree branch to s- sweep the mud a little bit there. They don't. I just got to say, they don't look incredibly well organized or. You know what's here. going on here. <laughs> what? Yes, you know what. I mean, everyone knows they're being filmed. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They're like, oh, I'm going to sweep this ground with this branch. It's and like that street, guy... street cleaners in China, you remember? Yeah. The government jobs, they're just like standing around yeah. doing nothing. They give them a, like an oil can that's yeah. cutting the triangle. Yeah. This guy over here is like looking re- like looking at the footage again to make sure it's okay. Yeah, he's probably... like, can we release this? Yeah, exactly. Passes by the sensor board. Yeah. Hey, at least anyway, they're doing yeah, they're something. That's good. I'm they, sure a lot of people come on out and do their thing, you know. Um, so now, you want to p- talk about this uh, particular place? Yeah. So this, is, I think, this is important. It's kind of leading up to what I'm getting at here. Okay. Guozhou is a is a area kind of right near Beijing, right right below Beijing. Yes. And it's in this kind of plain area. It's an agriculture area, but it's got like six hundred thousand people, right? right. Now, had had six. Oh well, yeah, it's called the first prefecture under heaven, and I think that's very under, uh, important to remember the word heaven here, under okay. heaven. Yeah. Okay. Now this area was I didn't see enough people talking about it because what happened was Beijing kind of leveraged their own utilities and and ways to get the water away from Beijing and send it all down to this place. Yeah, so they like opened up sluice gates and yeah. uh, reservoirs and Dams, stuff to send kind of stuff, yeah. send all the water here. They're like, get it out of the city. So a lot of the Chairman footage... Mao's like portraits getting wet. Yes. Out. Don't let that happen. Don't let his embalmed jerky corpse <laughs> yes. get wet. You know. Imagine that floating down the river. It actually looked like he was still alive. <laughs> yeah. You know when he was doing his that swimming. That would be scary. Yeah. Yeah, be super anyway, scary. this is the one that I felt like didn't get enough attention. Right. I, my heart goes out to the people here yeah. because six hundred thousand people were affected. If you look at where it is, and I think this is probably what China does not want you to know about. Mm. Um, Beijing was ultimately yeah, a you lot can, of it was protected. Yeah, take a look. So there's Beijing on the map, and then you can just see there's it right Guozhou, there. Yeah. yeah, okay, very close. So that's where the flood waters were directed to. Yes, according to uh, the locals there, the yeah. people were absolutely devastated and heartbroken. Yeah, some uh, of the footage that you saw earlier is from this area. Yes, so I guess it's a little lower in terms of sea level, which is going to mm-hmm. make it a natural basin for this. But you stuff. can see how close it is to Beijing. By the way, props to the you know the official photo for George. Yeah, what is this official it? photo? It <laughs> looks like shit. And you go click the next one, right? Because this is on uh, Google Earth, right? Yeah, you click the next photo, and you're like, oh, maybe it'll show me a better area. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, dude, that looks Guozhou, terrible. Okay. Uh, here's a quote from local says, "We are okay. taking on the floodwater discharge from Beijing, right?" So they should provide us with rescue and equipment, but there has been nothing. There was some stuff eventually, but they got the butt end of everything. The priority went to Beijing, and yeah. to get the water out of Beijing at all costs. Yeah. Because guess what? That's where the leadership lives. Yeah. That's where the government is headquartered. That's where the portrait of Mao is. Yeah, half a million people a little bit south to there are not uh, a priority to Beijing. Sure. They don't care about the people. Sure. Right. So you had these images coming out of there that were frightening, absolutely yeah. frightening. And this area was just destroyed yeah completely destroyed so you got to talk about this now we're finally getting to this point we've been teasing all the time the crux why is the chinese government panicking and trying so hard to bury these floods and play them down if there's one word you need to know for this entire episode it's tian ming tian ming means the mandate of heaven and i have the most easy to understand picture to, to paint a picture of what this actually means okay china has always been um, uh, dynasties, right? So the idea is that you have an emperor or a leader mm-hmm. that goes and fulfills a role as a leader. Everyone is subservient to said leader. He's got a bunch of concubines. He's, yes, it's the whole it's the whole image that you yeah. have in your mind about ancient yeah. China, right? But people like to think that that dynastical era, right? Mm-hmm. The Qing Dynasty, the Ming Dynasty, all these things are in the past, and China now has a modern government. Yeah. But what people don't understand is that nothing changed. No. Nothing changed at all. The CCP, the current Communist Party of China, is another dynasty. It just has a modern label. Yeah, right? so you've got your emperor, which yep. is uh, Xi Jinping. Yep. Okay, and he's got his whatever you consorts or all his normal stuff yeah. and his cohorts. And his, yeah, and they're all below him. And then you've got the peasants and you've got, you got all, it's all the same. Just because they're wearing Western suits mm. and not wearing these flowing robes 
robes with top knots and stuff doesn't mean that it hasn't changed. It's yeah. just changed names and yeah. flavors, Correct. right? Correct. So um, basically, if we have to go back to around 300 BC, and this is very, very simple to understand. Yeah, 300 is, BC is a long time it ago. It is, but this is where this current idea of the mandate of heaven kind of came from and persists today, yeah. right? This is Mencius and Mengzi. He said, the people are of supreme importance. The altars of soil and grain uh, come next. Last comes the ruler. So this is the priorities of how sure. things work, right? This is why he who gains the confidence of a, a multitudinous people will be emperor. When a local lord endangers the altars of soil and grain, he should be replaced, right? Yes. So that's a key phrase there. Yes. This is the most important. And yet floods and droughts come by the agency of heaven. Then the altars should be replaced, mm -hmm. right? So the idea, and this is kind of the dynastical cycle, is that when the emperor cannot provide for the people anymore, mm -hmm. the empire or the dynasty is hit with disasters, usually floods and droughts. Right. This causes the people to be like, wait a minute, we need new leadership yes. here. So let's look at the next image, and this is, this is the cycle of how things work, and this is what China's so scared of. I think it's supposed to be multitudinous. Multitudinous. I could be Multi wrong. Multitudinous. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Continue. Yes. Okay. So maybe you guys get this idea, right? So if uh, the people are starving and so on, that means the leader needs to get out. Right. Basically be replaced. And this is what China is trying to cover up. Okay. This is how it works. A new, first, a new dynasty is born and the new emperor makes changes to the government and other systems. To make the empire yeah, run smoother. Yeah, such as education, to right. make the empire run smoother. Then what comes next is everything works better in the empire for a little while. And mm -hmm. that's just how the nature of things works. China yeah. is a very organic place. They want things to be like, okay, now it's working. Yeah. Right? We've made the necessary changes. Right. Then? The government becomes corrupted normally by money or power. And people accept yeah. this because yeah. they understand China's always been run by corruption and power. Yeah. Nothing's changed. Right? Nope. Then what comes after that? Famine and natural disasters destroy the commoners' faith in their government. Does that one line make a lot of sense as to why a government is putting blue pieces of metal to censor a fallen bridge? Yes. Does it make sense why they don't want people talking about flooding in Tiananmen Square, the gate of the heavenly kingdom? Yeah. This and is just their bad infrastructure. Yeah. They're trying to hide the fact that it's actually bad planning on part of the government is why these cities flood anyway. Right. Bad enforcement of planning. I mean, even if they plan it right, they don't enforce the codes and so on. So when the construction people come in, they cut corners, they don't put in proper drainage, they don't do this stuff. But no one's there to like say, hey, you didn't do it. They're just like, okay, give me money and I'll turn a blind eye. This is a, this is, de these are details. This is a cycle, a mm. cyclical event that has persisted since 300 BC. Yeah. Where people still believe it today. Yeah. This so is, what comes next? This is undying, yeah. right? It says commoners become tired of all the problems in their empire. So they revolt. revolt. And what did we just see in Shanghai not that long ago? Yeah. We saw something rising up and never mind that. We saw the <laughs> Tiananmen Square massacre. Yeah was another example of this. But there have been plenty of almost revolts in China recently, but they've all been quashed because, you know, things are a bit different nowadays. With the information age, China's yeah. very good at like being able to monitor everybody and stop these things, these revolts starting. It would have already happened yeah. if they weren't constantly spending so much time and money putting out fires all the time and arresting anyone who even suggests, hey, let's meet up and talk about this problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this is where this word comes in. The dynasty is then, this is the next step. Dynasty is considered to have lost the mandate of heaven. And when you lose the mandate of heaven, it means that you are no longer legitimately the ruler of China. Yes. And because the people recognize that. They say, hey, wait, all this stuff doesn't work anymore. Mm. All this stuff, the housing, the housing crisis, the economy's dipping. We're yeah. losing all of our global international relations. Mm -hmm. You know, we've become kind of, uh, we're being looked down upon internationally. Yep. We now look to the leadership and we say, wait a minute, didn't that flood just happen? And then the flood goes to Beijing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it gets too real for a lot of, at least a subset of people that look at this and say, this is really weird. Because, you know, um, the Chinese government has managed to wipe out religion. Okay, Mao yeah. Zedong did that with a great leap backwards in the cultural devolution, where they wiped out history and religion. But superstition per has been prevails. impossible to get rid of in yeah. China. And this mandate of heaven is part of superstition. It is. Okay. And so you've got these older middle-aged people or the older people, they still very much believe in these superstitions. So if there's big natural disasters like this, usually that's a push 
for the government to change, for the emperor to change. And that's why the Chinese government is so adamant to play these down so that people don't see it as a big disaster. They want to see it as a little, a little bump which was triumphed by like all the rescue workers and stuff. They don't want to see how bad it is. And they did that as well with the uh, earthquake yes. in 2008, yes. which was they, huge. They cut off people's cell phone coverage yeah. so they couldn't communicate for rescue efforts. Yeah, and because they didn't that allow, was more important. you know, volunteer um, efforts from overseas, they didn't allow them to come and all of that because they just didn't, in the beginning, obviously, because Funds they just didn't pilfered. want, yeah, they just didn't want this to spread and everyone in China to realize how bad this disaster was. Yeah, and the, the last step of this is the current emperor is defeated and a new one takes his place. Now, I don't believe in superstition, mm -hmm. but you have to understand that a huge chunk of China's populace does, and this yeah. kind of stuff is the most palpable Mm -hmm. quoted example in history of how this happens. Yeah. How do you lose the mandate of heaven? Traditionally, it's a flood. Yeah. And so when it's on the doorstep of the current leadership, it's terrifying yeah. for the current leadership. What's this very hard to read And I just I thought this was really good. This is the dynastical cycle of China. Okay. You have all the empires, all the emperors, and all the dynasties that snake around. And this one, I like this graphic because it's a clear representation that the, the PRC, the People's Republic of China, the Communist Party of China, is just a continuation of said yeah. dynasty. It there's, really there's is. There's nothing different here. Yeah. Right? The, really the robes is. changed. Yeah. Yeah, they, they wore Western suits instead now. Yeah. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about plants and animals that came from China. Yep. That are ruining your country. They're forbidden fruits or whatever. Forbidden <laughs> fruits, you know. She does look like Xi Jinping. <laughs> Xi Jinping, dude. <laughs> that is Xi Jinping, but S-H-E. Easy to catch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't understand. Meow, meow, meow. Last five times, I also bought this. This is my flavor. They suck. 